Should we, should we wait now, like 4.40? Yeah. OK, yeah. Um, yes. Yeah. Can I connect the phone once? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. And the audio should be fine, right? Yeah. Okay. Should I move? Okay. okay. Right, so uh, we have cheap menu, and the postcard black box knowledge in the comments and rounds. Okay, yeah, uh, thank Andrew for the introduction. So um, in this talk, I will uh, talk about post and uh, quantum, uh, post quantum black box zero knowledge and constant rounds. There are uh, three keywords. One is uh, post quantum as usual. This is a quantum uh, information conference. And the other uh, two is black box and constant rounds. And I will explain why they're important and uh, what its results are relevant to uh, black box and constant rounds. I will show uh, both um, the impossibilities and feasibility for this kind of zero knowledge. And this is a, a joint, this is a joint um, submission uh, with both the impossibility result and the uh, possibility result. So uh, we start by core the interactive and their knowledge uh, proof in the classical setting. So uh, in, in, the, in the interactive proof setting, we have a prover who wants to prove some MP statement to the verifier. And here we use a, a large computer to denote a prover, which is usually uh, more powerful. And in a quantum case, it will have some uh, quantum power, maybe. Um, so here we use a... Um, um, so, and one example is the famous grease, uh, uh, graph three coloring. The prover wants to prove a graph is three colorable, and, but uh, doesn't want to verify you know, anything about the gray, uh, color assignment, which is a zero knowledge uh, property we will talk about later. But at least it should uh, satisfy the correctness uh, requirement. That says if this graph is three colorable, then it should convince the, uh, ver the verifier it is, uh, it is three uh, colorable, in other words, for any uh, statement that is in the, in the language, um, the verifier uh, output accept with probability one minus uh, negligible. Um, and the next requirement is soundness that says uh, any cheating prover cannot uh, convince the verifier. In other words, uh, let's take this example again. If this graph is not three colorable, then um, the verifier should always output no. And more concretely, if this MP statement is false, not in the language, then it never outputs except or only output that with negligible chance. So um, if this uh, malicious proof, I mean, if in this, uh, uh, the thumbness requirement, if the malicious prover can be um, uh, unbounded, then we call this a protocol of proof. Uh, otherwise, we call it an argument. And uh, in, in this uh, work, we will not distinguish uh, between proofs and arguments for the impossibility results because we can prove impossibility for our arguments, which uh, because uh, arguments is a weaker definition. So the impossibility is stronger. We will only uh, focus on the stronger uh, result. And that's, uh, that we will uh, basically stick with arguments. And now it comes to the most important property called uh, zero knowledge. The prover wants to uh, prove some statement to the verifier without revealing anything except the truth itself. So the, uh, this intuitive requirement can be formalized using the language of a simulator. So 
uh, their knowledge uh, uh, basically says that the followings are indistinguishable. So we have uh, the following picture. Um, for, the, for the real world, it is the interaction between the prover and the verifier. And at the end of their interaction, uh, interaction there will be a transcript and together with the output of the uh, verifier. So this is what happens in the real world. And uh, in the ideal world, there exists a simulator which uh, gets the code of that uh, verifier, as you can see um, here, and also get the instance and try to mimic what happens in the real world. And uh, uh, so the zero knowledge uh, property says that these two views are uh, either statistical indistinguishable or computationally indistinguishable. So in other words, um, I mean, this basically captures the word zero knowledge because this anything that can be generated in the real world by this uh, interaction can be simulated by uh, just having a simulator get, uh, get the, uh, access to the verifier. So, and if these two distributions are statistical, uh, statistical indistinguishable, then the protocol uh, satisfies so called statistical zero knowledge. Um, in other words, their distance is at most uh, by some negligible function. And similarly, we can define uh, computational zero knowledge. And in this talk, I, I will basically focus on computational zero knowledge, uh, in which case these two distributions are uh, close uh, by any com uh, computationally bounded distinguisher. And this is usually easier to achieve. And note that uh, we also allow this simulator to be expected poly time. Uh, and I will explain later, but like whether the simulator is expected poly time or strictly poly time is important to the existence of such their knowledge. So uh, then you may ask um, why we need their knowledge. And there are a couple of uh, reasons. So, First, it gives like many applications like identification, and also there are many uh, important proper, uh, like applications in blockchains. And also it contributes to uh, other fields of uh, TCS. So, um, and specifically in this talk, we'll focus on a special case of their knowledge, which is called uh, black box zero knowledge. So as we see in the previous slide, it, uh, what happens in the ideal world is there's a simulator that gets a code of a verifier also get the instance, try to mimic what happens in the real world. And the black box zero knowledge is actually defined as a simulator that only uh, uses this verifier in a black box manner. So instead of, you can, uh, instead of looking at the, the actual code, it only uh, gets the uh, Oracle access to the verifier. So there are some reasons that we care about black box zero knowledge. So first of all, this uh, black box simulation captures uh, most of the known simulation uh, techniques. And moreover, um, most of the known zero knowledge protocol with non black box uh, simulation usually requires very artificial constructions, like, uh, for example, running homomorphic encryption or some circuit, and are usually uh, less efficient. So, uh, especially for practical applications, uh, we care about efficiency. So, like, like identification and blockchains, the, the example we just gave. So efficiency is really an issue. So that's why we, um, that's another reason we care about black box zero knowledge. So uh, we know that the black box zero knowledge captures the, the natural class of uh, zero knowledge. So we believe it is interesting to understand what we can achieve and we, what we cannot uh, for black box zero knowledge. And that's the first keyword, black box. Um, and this, uh, the second keyword is the uh, constant rounds. So, um, this is basically another important measure of uh, zero knowledge protocol or interact like all this interactive protocol. So this is basically uh, the number of uh, uh, the, the rounds this, uh, of this protocol. And, and it's very uh, intuitive. The fewer rounds usually means more efficient protocols and give you more flexibility to constructing other uh, protocols or uh, primitives based on the existing uh, interactive protocol. So in this work, we will uh, particularly focus on the, the constant round uh, interactive protocol. Okay. So that's the two key measures of their knowledge. Um, okay, so let's um, briefly uh, reveal what we know for the classical zero knowledge for MP. So here we basically only focus on uh, MP. So uh, what we first know is in uh, 1980, 
1986, the first, uh, the first contraction of zero knowledge for MP was given by Goldrack, Vitali, and Wigerson. So they give uh, zero knowledge uh, with polynomial many runs. After that, there have been uh, many works on in, uh, reducing the run complexity of uh, zero knowledge for MP. And all these protocols require uh, expected polynomial time simulator to achieve zero knowledge. And one may ask, um, if that is uh, possible to construct their knowledge with only a uh, strict polyno uh, po polynomial time simulator. And you may ask why uh, does that matter? And there actually there's a couple of issues with expected uh, poly time. Uh, for example, um, it is not that friendly for doing reduction in some cases. And even more, this uh, expect uh, expected poly time, they do not compose very well. So um, therefore, People may wonder, like, if that's possible, we can get a, a constant round uh, their knowledge, a black box their knowledge with only strict polynomial time simulator. So, and indeed, um, Bauer and Lindell, they show that there's a, like an inherent barrier. They show that there does not exist a constant round black box their knowledge for MP with only a strict polynomial time simulator, unless MP is in, uh, in BPP. So this lemma says, uh, if you want to achieve constant round zero knowledge, then um, either non-black box simulation techniques is required, or uh, you need expected poly time simulation. So that's the uh, result for classical, what we know for classical zero knowledge, uh, black box zero, zero knowledge. And uh, our impossibility result is inspired from this result, and we will explain that at the very end. That's the reason I one mentioned this uh, classical result. Okay. So, and that's um, what we, what I want to mention for classical zero knowledge for MP. Then let's uh, switch to the quantum world. And uh, as usual, I will use a, a, a small computer with the background for this quantum uh, cheating verifier and also similarly for a quantum simulator. So uh, uh, post-quantum zero knowledge is still a classical zero knowledge protocol, but we want to have a, a quantum zero knowledge against um, quantum adversaries. So that means uh, both the honest prover and the verifier are, cla are still classical. If everything is uh, executed in an honest way, everything will be classical. But we need to uh, consider what happens if this uh, cheating verifier want to learn something from the interact uh, from the interaction, and this cheating verifier will be modeled as a, as a quantum machine. And in this talk, we will uh, simply focus on zero knowledge and the correctness and soundness uh, will be uh, similarly defined, but will be uh, easy to achieve. So we ignore for now. So for quantum zero knowledge, uh, we want to capture the, the following idea. That is, no quantum malicious verifier can learn anything other than the truth itself. Therefore, we define uh, just like what we define in the classical setting, there's two pictures. Uh, on the left side, it is the real world. That is, there's a classical uh, prover classically interact with a quantum cheating verifier. And at the end of the day, they output all the classical transcript, which is their interaction, together with some quantum output that is outputted by the uh, quantum verifier. And on the other side, is it, it, uh, this is the ideal world, where this uh, quantum simulator uh, is uh, okay. So here we focus on uh, so the black box setting. So it has quantum access to the uh, quantum uh, verifier, and the end of the day, it outputs all the classical transcripts together with another quantum state. And and we want to uh, so the the post quantum zero knowledge, knowledge is it, say these two views are either statistically close or um, computationally close. So, and because we already know that uh, there are many classical zero knowledge protocol, one may wonder, uh, maybe constructing a post-quantum zero knowledge is as easy as just constructing a classical zero knowledge on some um, post-quantum assumptions. But unfortunately, it is not that case. And it's especially because one issue called rewinding issue. So rewinding is a, a common, uh, common technique in the classical proof that is um, to do the uh, to do the simulator, you usually want to run this verifier up to a certain point, and then you want to rewind the verifier and run that uh, again. 
So this usually requires you to have a snapshot of the verify at a certain point, and you can get back to the snapshot and run that again. Okay, so since we uh, talk about snapshots, so you will think about uh, like very similar to this cloning a quantum state or cloning a specific uh, state of the quantum machine. And, and that's the reason why uh, such proof will be problematic in the quantum state. And, and, uh, so, and basically it is impossible to rewind a quantum verifier uh, in general, and otherwise you would violate this no cloning principle. And so, uh, so for this reason, it is often much more difficult to prove zero knowledge uh, in a quantum setting. And, and that's the uh, barrier we're facing. And then let's uh, reveal a couple of uh, results in the, in the quantum uh, world. Here we we'll first reveal the result for the uh, first quantum zero knowledge for MP, that is uh, the work by Rogers. They first, uh, he first showed a black box zero knowledge for MP with uh, polynomial many bonds. He proved that this GMW protocol indeed satisfy a uh, post quantum zero knowledge. However, his technique is not uh, able to prove zero knowledge uh, with only a constant round. And it has been open to construct a constant round uh, post quantum zero knowledge. And recently, uh, Bikansky and Shumley, they showed that a uh, constant around their knowledge for NP. Uh, but uh, however, their security proof relies on uh, non-black box simulator technique. And as we see uh, in the discussion of our uh, classical zero knowledge, it, we have like many advantages of uh, black box zero knowledge over non-black box ones. So we ask the following question. Are there constant around uh, post-quantum black box uh, zero knowledge for so, and our results are twofold. The first one is the, our uh, main possibility result. We show that uh, there does not exist a constant around uh, post-quantum black box zero knowledge for MP, uh, unless MP is in B2B. So this is a strong uh, negative evidence about the existence of a uh, constant around post-quantum DB uh, CK for MP. And also let's report the result, uh, the classical result that is when the simulator is allowed to be expected polynomial time, then such uh, their knowledge uh, do exist. So our result actually demonstrate a significant difference between the classical and the post quantum black box zero knowledge. And uh, furthermore, this uh, even more ju justified the use of non black box simulation in the work by uh, Bitensky and Shumli. So our work and their work together give a tight characterization of what we can get um, for post-quantum uh, constant round zero knowledge. That is, you can get that from non-black box uh, simulation techniques, but that is impossible to do with only black box uh, extraction or black box simulation techniques. So, and then our next result is about the possibility results. So as we already see, there's strong evidence to get constant round black box zero knowledge. We are still interested in like what we can get. So then we consider a weaker version of their knowledge called epsilon zero knowledge. So epsilon, epsilon zero knowledge basically says that, um, so re, uh, recall like in, in the zero knowledge picture, we have an ideal world and a, a, a real world. So the epsilon zero knowledge says that uh, the distance of the ideal world and the real world uh, if they are bounded by epsilon, then the simulator can uh, only run in time uh, inverse in one over epsilon, uh, in, uh, running in time one over epsilon. So this is like a weaker uh, version of the zero knowledge. So that's the second part of our result. We show that a uh, constant round black box epsilon zero knowledge does exist. So we prove a five round protocol by Goldrick Kahan that is uh, post quantum secure by adapting the hash function with collapsing uh, hash function. And then we also show a constant run protocol from uh, post-quantum uh, one-way functions. Okay. And you see, uh, we have a three-run protocol for, um, for the epsilon zero knowledge. And then using the similar idea, we show that there are no three-run post-quantum uh, black box epsilon zero knowledge. In other words, uh, we know there is protocol uh, for three rounds, but there's no protocol for, uh, uh, there are protocol for five rounds, but there's no protocol for three rounds. And 
But recently, by subsequent work by Lombardi, Ma and Spooner, they show that uh, such four-run protocol does exist. Therefore, it gives like a, a tight uh, characterization of what we can do with uh, black box um, uh, uh, epsilon zero knowledge. Although their model is like uh, slightly stronger than uh, what we find here. So to summarize our results, we first show a constant run post quantum black box zero knowledge is impossible, and then. Uh, we relax the definition of their knowledge by uh, to to the epsilon zero knowledge, and we show it is uh, indeed possible. Then we show uh, we have a five round post quantum black box epsilon zero knowledge, but three round is impossible. And the final result is since uh, all the construction here uh, need relies on private coins, so we further justify the uh, requirement of the private coin. So we show that uh, constant round public coin black box epsilon zero knowledge is also impossible. Therefore, if you want to achieve uh, constant round black box epsilon knowledge, you also need to rely on private coins. So the overall picture gives a tight characterization of what we can get for uh, zero knowledge uh, with black box simulation in constant rounds. Um, right. So. Uh, how many times? Okay. So let me uh, briefly uh, talk about the, the main uh, techniques, the proof ideas. So let's, let's record the impossibility result on the classical uh, black box zero knowledge with strict polynomial time uh, simulation. The core idea behind that is uh, to consider a verifier that will refuse to execute with some hidden probability. That is, uh, you consider a verifier that every, at every stage, it will abort with probability one minus epsilon. Here, the epsilon is the uh, probability that it will uh, answer the, the next uh, response. So uh, then basically to simulate this transcript, to simulate, uh, to, to simulate the transcript, a simulator must uh, rewind at least one or epsilon times uh, to see both the transcript and to learn the aborting probability. In other words, uh, our main observation is that the simulator, if it can uh, simulate the transcript, it must learn the hidden aborting probability, which is uh, one minus epsilon or the epsilon, which is the uh, one minus the hidden probability. So to prove our impossibility, we consider a verifier with different aborting probability. And the probability is controlled by some auxiliary quantum register. And when the uh, control bit is zero, then uh, it never aborts. In other words, the epsilon will equals to one. And when the control bit is equals to one, then it will abort with some hidden epsilon. And we show that a successful simulation will force this uh, aborting probability to be measured. And therefore, uh, you can always come up with a way to easily identify uh, if uh, this is by a output by a simulator or by just a, a, a honest execution. Um, right, and I don't see if I have time, but yeah, that's everything I want to talk about. Thanks. Okay, we've time for some questions. Thanks for the nice talk. Um, so uh, one thing that I, that I wondered, uh, because you have there, there's this um, the two options like proper proper zero knowledge and epsilon zero knowledge. Yes. Um, is there any uh, reason from the application side to require a full zero knowledge, say for I don't know blockchains or. Uh, that's a good question. I think in most of the applications, epsilon knowledge is like uh, already very good. So I think it's like more from a theor theoretical perspective to understand uh, their knowledge. I think epsilon knowledge is like usually uh, sufficient. It's okay. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Yes. I have a quick question. Uh -huh. So do you have any ideas whether the impossibility holds if you have quantum communication? Um, 
I'm not sure. I think the current framework requires this, uh, uh, the, requires the communication to be um, classical. I think it's plausible to extend the result if these two, if they share some ETA pairs or like some, uh, let me think about that. Um, okay, I'm not 100% sure, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. 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 It does? Yes. Um, right. 